Hi, it's Katrina. The Earth's oxygen levels are dropping, but what if the opposite were to happen and the world's atmospheric oxygen levels doubled? From enormous bugs to easier travel, here are 10 things you could possibly expect. Number 10. Increased biodiversity and growth. As insects and other creatures inhaled more oxygen, they would inevitably grow and become more varied. In fact, it's happened before. Fluctuations in atmospheric oxygen started long before humans existed. Between 485 and 445 million years ago, during the Ordovician period, oxygen levels increased threefold reaching modern levels around 455 million years ago. This literal breath of fresh air led to an explosion of biodiversity and played a key role in early evolution. Between 359 and 299 million years ago, the atmospheric oxygen level was around 30% compared to our 21% today. This difference led to rapidly emerging lowland forests, so arthropods could have breathed more easily without much effort. Dragonflies were the size of modern seagulls, and arthropleura walked the earth the largest invertebrates of all time. They got to about 3 meters or 10 feet long. They would have had few, if any, predators. Bugs may have become larger as an evolutionary response to rising oxygen levels to avoid getting oxygen poisoning, and massive insects could easily meet their energy needs. Around 215 million years ago, oxygen levels increased from 15 to 19 percent, helping the dinosaurs grow and flourish. A spike in oxygen levels also likely contributed to the emergence of large mammals following the 10 million million year Cretaceous Paleogene mass extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs around 66 million years ago. Between 205 million years ago and the present day, atmospheric oxygen levels rose from 10 to 21 percent, spiking at 23 percent around 50 million years ago, when large mammals came into existence. Should oxygen levels ever rise drastically again, we can probably count on another era of increased biodiversity and growth in the animal kingdom. Number 9. Increased stamina and immune system. Oxygen plays a critical role in human strength and stamina because it helps your body transform stored energy, or glycogen, into glucose which acts as fuel for your muscles. Having more oxygen available with each breath would mean more of it traveling effortlessly to your lungs, blood, and the rest of your body, giving you enhanced energy and agility. Your endurance would therefore improve dramatically if atmospheric oxygen levels doubled. Theoretically speaking, the more oxygen that reaches your cells, the more turbocharged your body would become. People who are already fit in today's world would become super athletes, shattering world records with unprecedented speed and strength. And those of us who fall more toward the average end of the spectrum might have an easier time getting into shape. Having higher atmospheric oxygen levels would benefit neutrophils, a type of white blood cell that uses oxygen to fight disease. Neutrophils comprise a critical part of our immune systems, and by receiving more oxygen, they would do an even better job at fighting off harmful viruses and bacteria. Many, if not most people, would become sick less often. The positive effects of increased oxygen levels wouldn't just be physical. Your mind would also function better. With more oxygen oxygen traveling to your brain, your concentration would probably improve drastically. So not only would it be easier to achieve the body you've always wanted, you could also arguably become a brainiac. Of course, as you'll learn later in this video, there are limits to how much we can truly benefit from higher oxygen levels. Sometimes there's just too much of a good thing. Number 8. More forest fires. Unfortunately, a higher atmospheric oxygen level would mean a more combustible atmosphere. After all, oxygen fuels fire, and this would bode disaster for greenery. Forest fires would be massive and unimaginably difficult to combat, and in a world where they already spread too easily, the damage could be utterly devastating. Even wet vegetation would fail to stop the flames from destroying anything in their path, and it wouldn't be just forests that were affected. Homes, buildings, wildlife, and human lives would inevitably become casualties of these raging blazes. These fires could also have the paradoxical effect of lowering the Earth's oxygen levels. Scientists claim that although the rapidly burning Amazon could turn into a dry savanna, causing severe long-term implications for wildlife, natural resources, and the indigenous people who call the rainforest home, the planet has enough oxygen to last millions of years at its current levels, and forest fires are not currently a threat to the world's oxygen supply. But more oxygen would mean more fires, and more fires could amount to a bigger, more rapid depletion of this precious, life-sustaining gas. And now for number 7. But first, big shout out to Pinoy Trivia and Muzzle Flash for being so supportive of this channel. Appreciate you! 
Be sure to subscribe if you are new here and join the Origins Explained family. Number seven, exhaustion and oxygen toxicity. While there are some good things that might happen to our mind and body with more oxygen, there would be some negative effects as well. If you took in more oxygen with each breath, your metabolism would increase. This sounds great, right? After all, having a high metabolism is commonly associated with having an easier time staying thin, a side effect many of us wouldn't mind. But the enhanced sense of well-being might prove to be rather short lived. A higher metabolism could cause your body's organs to overexert themselves, eventually leading to potentially fatal exhaustion. In fact, in the event of higher oxygen levels, it's possible that people would perish more from this than they would from disease. Not so great after all, huh? Excess oxygen can also cause something called oxygen toxicity. This is the same thing that affected insects that evolved to become larger to avoid this very condition. Humans may not fare as well. We can't really evolve that quickly. Too much oxygen would have harmful effects on a person's central nervous system and or their pulmonary health. Some of the milder symptoms of oxygen toxicity include twitching, strange breathing, clumsiness, and convulsions. Number six. Effects on photosynthesis? One scientific theory holds that a heightened oxygen level would have an inhibiting effect on photosynthesis due to the lower concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that would come along with it. As a result, the landscape would become more prehistoric, I guess, with plants like mushrooms and mosses proliferating while green vegetation would become less common. This theory stems from scientific knowledge that the process of photosynthesis, which serves as the basis for life as we know it, evolved nearly 3 billion years ago, when oxygen levels on Earth were extremely low. Oxygen is a waste product of photosynthesis, and in the past this process even sparked a mass extinction called the Great Oxygenation Event. I'll tell you more about that later. Therefore, photosynthesis is directly related to increased oxygen levels, but this atmospheric change could theoretically have the paradoxical effect of hindering the process. However, according to a 2011 study by researchers from Umea University in Sweden and the University of Osnabrück in Germany, increased oxygen levels do not directly hinder photosynthesis. So so that's where we are right now. Scientists are admittedly trying to learn more about this process since the creation of sustainable fuels would rely on artificial photosynthesis, inevitably leading to higher oxygen levels. Number five travel to higher elevations. If you've ever had altitude sickness, you know how unpleasant it is, and in some cases, it can even be fatal. Put simply, if you travel too high without being properly acclimated to the decreased oxygen levels, you can suffer serious ailments like hypoxia and dehydration. People with cardiopulmonary disease are at especially high risk of the potentially serious effects of high altitude. Researchers suggest that inexperienced travelers gradually become accustomed to high altitudes, climbing no more than around 985 feet per day after ascending the first 10,000 feet or so, and dedicating every third day to rest. People on expeditions often have a tendency to climb too fast, and this is very dangerous for weaker or higher risk group members. Besides altitude sickness, there's also something called acute mountain sickness, and even experienced climbers are not immune to it. Symptoms include insomnia, headache, and breathlessness. In a world with a higher atmospheric oxygen level, people could safely travel to higher elevations and at faster speeds. Not only would altitude-related illnesses be far less of an issue, in many if not most cases, this would no longer be an issue at all. In fact, if oxygen levels doubled, higher altitudes might actually be safer for humans, enabling us to escape the potential for oxygen toxicity that I told you about earlier. For those who have always wanted to live on a cliffside or take up hiking or mountain climbing, or who dream of scaling Mount Everest but lack the physical fitness for it, this advantage would be especially exciting. But people who prefer to spend most of their time by the sea, in valleys, low deserts, and most other landscapes on Earth would probably be less wowed. In other words, this effect of higher oxygen levels might not be that important to you. Number four ease of flight. With oxygen levels doubled, atmospheric air density would increase, enabling planes and birds to fly at higher altitudes and to remain airborne for longer time periods. The atmosphere would also become thicker, scattering more sunlight and making the sky appear bluer, and the air temperature would decrease. Higher atmospheric oxygen levels may also affect the cabin pressure of an aircraft. When you fly in an airplane, the higher the aircraft travels, the lower the air pressure becomes inside the cabin. Of course, airplane cabins are pressurized to keep oxygen levels safe enough for most passengers. But after climbing to about 8,000 feet, 
oxygen levels drop from 21%, which is what we're used to, to about 15%. Most people don't notice the difference or experience mild effects from this drop, which the Telegraph compared to visiting the high-altitude metropolises of Bogotá or Mexico City. But travelers with certain medical conditions that already keep their oxygen levels lower than normal often need an additional oxygen supply while flying. I'm no flight expert, but an interesting question to ask would be whether higher atmospheric oxygen levels would affect the pressurization of airplane cabins. Would aircrafts maintain a higher oxygen level than they currently do? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number three. Fuel efficiency. When you hear the term fuel efficiency, you probably automatically think of it as a good thing, right? We're programmed to see it that way and for understandable reasons, but it's a little more complicated than that. It would arguably be easier to go green in a world with higher oxygen levels, at least in some ways. Having more oxygen and fuel would improve engine performance by reducing the engine's nitrogen intake, thus lowering fuel consumption. Cars, industrial machinery, and any other devices that run on fuel would become much more efficient. But there would be an unfortunate trade-off. Fuel would be more combustible, leading to the greater release of exhaust gases. The atmospheric effects could prove to be highly detrimental. When considering this context, higher fuel efficiency does not necessarily translate to less pollution, and developing cleaner fuel would be just as important, if not more so, in a world with higher oxygen levels. Number two. Altered climate. For a long time, scientists became so preoccupied with atmospheric carbon dioxide propelling climate change, they made the mistake of downplaying oxygen's potential role in climate change and how it has affected this phenomenon in the past. But as writer Sarah Zielinski reported in a 2015 Smithsonian Magazine article, computer models based on carbon data alone have failed to fully explain the past several billion years of climate change on Earth. For example, Zielinski explains the Cenomanian age of the late Cretaceous period was marked by extraordinarily high temperatures, yet carbon-based computer models produce low precipitation rates and polar temperatures, which are uncharacteristic of this time period. Climate scientist Chris Polson and his colleagues incorporated oxygen into their calculations and discovered that this was the missing element from their previous models. Based on this experiment, researchers believe that plugging oxygen into other past equations for climate change may lead to more reliable results. Polson was careful to warn that this realization has no effect on today's climate climate change, which is driven purely by greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane. Oxygen levels are dropping today, but at a very slow rate, approximately tens of parts per million per year, Polson told Smithsonian Magazine. The rate is much too slow to affect climate in the modern world. But it's a valid factor for the hypothetical situation we're talking about today, which is what if the world's oxygen levels doubled? And the truth is, we don't know exactly what might happen climate-wise under such circumstances, but experts know that there would likely be some changes. Considering the effect of oxygen levels on climate change may prove useful in studying the past and for looking much farther into the future. For scientists who like to look at the bigger picture of things, this is probably something worth studying. Number one. The Great Oxidation Event Around 2.4 billion years ago, a mass extinction called the Great Oxidation Event occurred, also called the Great Oxygenation Event. A 2018 study by researchers from the University of Washington shows that hundreds of millions of years before this happened, oxygen levels on Earth rose and fell several times suggesting that the presence of oxygen on our planet results from a process that repeatedly tried and failed over a long time period. In 2007, a team of scientists led by the University of Washington professor of Earth and Space Sciences, Roger Buick, found that around 50 to 100 million years before the Great Oxidation Event, the world experienced an infusion of oxygen. The more recent research, which Buick also participated in, discovered another whiff of oxygen in the Earth's past, roughly 150 million years earlier, or around 2.6 billion years ago. This episode lasted for less than 50 million years. What do these transient increases of atmospheric oxygen mean for our planet's future? So far, it seems as though experts are unsure if or when we could experience another such burst of fresh air. But researchers believe that the information from these studies could come in handy for detecting signs of life outside our solar system. Based on the findings, when a planet's atmosphere is transitioning into a permanently life-sustaining state, it may experience periods of being oxic, or oxygenated, for several million years, 
before slipping back into an anoxic or non-oxygenated atmosphere. So if you fail to detect oxygen in a planet's atmosphere, that doesn't mean that the planet is uninhabited or even that it lacks photosynthetic life, Buick explained. One possibility is merely that it hasn't built up enough sources of oxygen to overwhelm the sinks for any longer than a short period. What do you think about that? Thanks for watching! Which one do you think would affect you the most? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye!